On our third video for chapter nine, we're going to talk about the applications of the ideal gas law that we introduced in the second video and kind of put together. PV equals NRT, you'll be using that a lot, right? P is the pressure in atmosphere, V is the volume in liters, N is our amount in moles, right, of a gas, obviously, this chapter being all about gases. T is a temperature in Kelvin, and that ideal gas law we alluded to in the second video, right, is our ideal gas constant R 0 0.08206. Lots of units on that one, liters multiplied by atmospheres over moles multiplied times Kelvin, All right, because it's a proportionality constant. It has to relate all the other units that we're using for those other variables. And the use of PV equals NRT, right, is for ideal gases, right? It's called the ideal gas law. So if PV equals NRT properly describes, does a pretty good job anyway of describing the behavior of a gas, we said we say that that gas exhibits ideal behavior. Yeah. Now, we will work in this section assuming ideal behavior, but beware, and we'll talk about this later in the chapter, but that, that that's only a good assumption when we're under low pressure and high temperature. Okay, so low P, high T, those are the conditions we want for a gas to have ideal behavior. And again, we'll explain why when we talk about kinetic molecular theory. Okay. Then at the end of chapter nine, we talk about the non-ideal gas law, which we can use for any gas. We don't have to approach ideal conditions. But none of that now. Right now we're just thinking about equation one, PV equals NRT, and equation two, the modified version of the ideal gas law, which is, again, a combination of the Aminton, Boyle, and Charles law. Right? If moles are kept constant, so the amount of a gas doesn't change, then I can relate the initial pressure, volume, and temperature, right, with the subscript one, that means the initial amount, to the final amount with the subscript two, P2, V2, and T2. Right, if I know any of those five variables, I can solve for the sixth. Right, and I've got a couple of memes that have been sent to students, or sent from students, littered into this chapter. Here's one of them. You can see they're starting to get outdated. This one's almost two years old. Yeah. But, right, Aminton, Charles, and Boyle coming together. Some other things to be aware of, right? If we know that pressure, temperature, and volume okay, can affect a gas, uh, then we want to have some standard quantities when we're reporting data. Okay. So when we are reporting information on gases, we tend to use a standard temperature and pressure known as STP, where we're working at one atmosphere of pressure and at 273 Kelvin, so zero degrees Celsius. So those are the things, standard temperature and pressure. You should know what that means. STP, one atmosphere, 273 Kelvin. And actually what that works out to, if we have an ideal gas, right, one mole of an ideal gas at one atmosphere and 273 Kelvin, we can calculate the amount that that would take up. Because if we're assuming ideal behavior for all gases, that amount is the same. And you can do this for practice. Use PV equals NRT. Pressure is one atmosphere. N is one mole, R is a constant, we just talked about, T is 273 Kelvin. When you solve for V, the volume, you should get 22.4 liters. And that's known as the standard molar volume. Because different gases, if they have ideal behavior, one mole of different gases will all take up 22.4 liters of space. Okay. So that brings us to our first example problem which asks about finding a volume of a sample at STP. I'll upload a second video showing how to solve this video. Well, I guess it won't be the second. A later video showing how to solve this problem. You should get a final answer here of 0 0.193 liters. Another way of using PV equals NRT to solve for volume. But now let's think about stoichiometry and tie chapter 9 back into chapter 4. A stoichiometry of gaseous substances, mixtures, and reactions in section 9.3. This is going to allow us to calculate density of a gas, molar mass of an ideal gas, okay? do stoichiometry calculations, and then talk about mixtures. And we'll get one more law out of chapter 9, Dalton's law. 
So let's think about stoichiometry and what's really convenient about gases. Okay, we know that we can use the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, to relate any of those quantities, pressure, volume, temperature, moles. Right? But what about other quantities? Well, all right, if we take the N in PV equals NRT, which is moles, we can also find moles by taking grams divided by the molar mass, right? Grams over grams over mole is equal to just mole. So we plug that in, grams over molar mass, right? MM there is one variable, molar mass. And that allows us to do some more manipulations, okay? We can also think about the fact that density is equal to mass over volume. So I can put that into the ideal gas law as well. Okay, work in density now. And when I do that, right, I can solve for the density of a gas as being equal to the molar mass multiplied by the pressure over R, the gas constant, and T, the Kelvin temperature. Right. So we said in chapter one, when we were learning about intensive and extensive properties, right, density is intensive. It doesn't depend on the amount. Okay, you cut something in half, it still has the same density. But the density of a gas does depend on pressure, temperature, and molar mass. Okay? The higher the pressure, the higher the density. The higher the molar mass, the higher the density. The higher the temperature, the lower the density. Okay? Which are all things that are illustrated with these pictures of the balloon. One other thing to look out for, all right, when you are using density, oh, I got a little bit ahead of myself. When you're using density in these equations, right, note that the density is grams per liter, which is a normal amount to use for a gas. They're not very dense, okay? So usually, like liquids, we're doing grams per milliliter. Here, density of a gas in these equations, it's grams over liters. So make sure you're looking out for that in your calculations. Okay, one other manipulation here is explained in this slide. We already saw the first equation. I can also solve for the molar mass of a gas by multiplying by the mass in grams times R times T over PV. Okay, so two new equations. They're not new in the sense that, you know, we just derived them from PV equals NRT by playing around with units, but they do allow us to do some other things. Calculate density, calculate molar mass. Which brings us to another example problem. Okay, We're talking about five grams of neon with a pressure and a temperature, we are asked to solve for the volume. What you need to do here is convert the pressure to atmospheres, convert the temperature to Kelvin, and then use the equation from the previous slide to solve for the volume. Okay, the information you need that's not shown here is the molar mass of neon. Final answer for this problem is 19 liters, but again, I'll upload a video, supplementary video, showing how to solve this problem. So our last idea from section 19.3 is Dalton's Law. And what Dalton's Law does is allow us to work with mixtures of gases. As long as the gases are inert, meaning they don't react with one another, then the pressure of each individual gas contributes to the overall pressure. And the pressures of those individual gases are called partial pressures. And that idea is summarized by Dalton's law of partial pressures. The total pressure, right, P sub T here for total, is equal to right, the sum of the partial pressures of the component gases, however many there are. If there are three, PA plus PB plus PC. If there are seven, you just add all seven together to get the total pressure. We see what that looks like in a picture right here, right? If I have three individual gases at a fixed volume here, 300, 600, and 450 kilopascals, add them all together, the total pressure is just the sum of those individual pressures, right? 600 plus 300 plus 450 is equal to 1350. The total pressure is the sum of each of them, provided they don't react with one another. So again, Dalton's Law summarized right here. We can relate partial pressure, that ideal from Dalton's Law, 
to the total pressure also by multiplying by something that's known as the mole fraction, okay? So the partial pressure of any gas, so P sub A, the pressure of A is equal to X, X represents mole fraction multiplied by P sub T, so P total. Partial pressure of A is equal to the mole fraction of A multiplied by the total pressure. And you can do that for any part of a mixture. Yeah. So that's a new unit, mole fraction. The mole fraction of a gas. It's a unit of concentration, okay, but it doesn't actually have any units. X, the mole fraction, is equal to the moles of that thing divided by the total number of moles. And you end up with a unitless quantity because it's moles over moles. So they cancel out. And they are in decimal form, right? So if I had two moles of A and 10 total moles, the mole, the mole fraction would be 0 0.2, right? 2 over 10. And if the mole fraction is 0 0.2, you can think about that like being 20%. It contributes 20% of the pressure overall. That's what the partial pressure means. Okay? So those are the two big takeaways from chapter 9. The ideal gas law and Dalton's law. You use them a lot for calculations. We finish this video with a third example problem, right, where we have a valve separating two containers. And what this asks us to do is we have helium and argon, two noble gases, so they don't react with one another. But what we need to do is solve for the pressure in the container after we open that valve and the two get mixed, because it's not as simple it's just adding those two pressures together because what's also happening is the volume is changing. So I'll upload a supplementary video showing how to solve that and know how to do these types of equations. Be comfortable working with the ideal gas law. Be comfortable working with Dalton's law. They're the two biggest parts of chapter nine.